It's two days after Shavuot. And of course, all of us know the Vart that from Rish Chedesh until Yud Bey's Sibin, we don't say Tachanan, right? The first 12 days of Sibin, we don't say Tachanan. And of course, stay. <laughs> Um, the Rebbe, uh, everything else, the Rebbe touches, explains everything. So the Rebbe has a sikhe where he talks about this five days before Shavuos. And he brings the alphabet. Each day is a yom for a different reason. Not because there's one basic idea of Shlai Chif Me'agbala, but each day is a different yom tif, is a different mayit. Then you have after Shavuos. The Shavuos is Vav and Zayin. So then you have Ches. Ches is called Yom Tavoyach, which was a date that for sure was dedicated to Karbonis, because some Karbonis you can't bring a Yom Tov proper. Carbon oil you can't bring a Yom Tov proper. And then you have Yom Tov Shlomen. Till Yud Bein Sivin is makeup days, right? Friday is Yud, tomorrow is Yud. So Sunday is Yud Bein. So until this coming Sunday is, uh, is the Yom Tov Shlomen for Shavuos. So we don't say Tachanan. So the simple title of Yemei Tashlumen is Days of Makeup. To make up for, for deficiencies, for loss, for missing out. But of course the Rebbe translates the word Tashlumen not just as payment, but as perfection and wholeness. And I like to add peacefulness. So Yemei Tashlumen doesn't only mean what you're making up for what you missed, but what you already did should be wholesome, should be perfect, should be precise. And the ultimate proof that something is precise is that it's peaceful. And when it relates to Torah, this has a very, very special aspect, right? I love to say, I love to say, I really love to say that Bukudi Hashem Yishore Misam Chelev. The Torah brings a person joy. In other words, if a person learns Torah and it doesn't make him happy, he didn't understand it. He didn't understand it. Because Lima Da Torah is supposed to give a person simple. The Rebbe brings in my modern Lima that is supposed to give a person time and pleasure. And of course, we know about the whole idea of Bittel and Tan Lashani Yimrasecha, Ke'ede Acher Akeri, which of course is brought in Hasidus. But uh, without knowing how to resolve all the contradictions, this is one of the many contradictions that on the one hand, Tayda has to be learned with Bittel, and on the other hand, Tayda is not like mitzvahs. Mitzvahs you do because the Abish just said. Torah, you're supposed to understand. Torah, you're supposed to have your Ariella. Ariella, that's disturbing us. Um, Torah, you're supposed to understand. And the proof that you understood the Torah, that a Pashid gave you pleasure, or like the Pashid had Lashin Simcha, joy. And the idea to this, of course, is that we say that on Tisha B'Yav, which is the time of Avelis, you're not allowed to study Torah. When a person that Chmanta has an oval, you're not allowed to study Torah. Why not? Because Taylor makes you happy. I, <laughs> I know too many people who tell you they can't wait for the Shia to finish. That's when they're happy because Bishas and Shia, they're either asleep or they're half asleep or they understand halfway or a quarter. Not everybody learns, understands completely. But this is one of the great Zuchusim in Torah. That you shouldn't only learn. You shouldn't only understand. But you should understand in such a way that it gives you joy and pleasure, which is a proof, which is a proof that you understand it correctly. It's a proof that you understand it correctly. So when you're coming from Shavuos, so of course you have the Gemara that we all know about Rabbi Yaisi. That the, so first of all, but again, we have three Regalah. We have Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. Right, the, the splitters will say you have four Regalah. Pesach, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeres is a fourth Regalah, Regalah, Bifnei Atzmei, and Shavuos, four Regalah, two Atzeres. You have Pesach and Atzeres of Pesach, which is Shavuos, and Sukkot, the Atzeres of Sukkot, which is called Shemini Atzeres. And when it comes to the other Yom Tevin, there's a Machloikis between Rabbi Yezir and Rabbi Yeshua. Right? Um, one opinion is, Chatsi Lochem V'chatsi La Hashem. A half a day you have to give Hashem, which is go to Shul and Daven and learn and be involved in holiness. Chatsi Lochem, the other half a day has to be a time of Simcha. You have to push it, feast, eat, and drink, and be happy on Yom Tov. It's a mitzvah. So one opinion is and the other opinion is You get to choose. A person has a choice. 
One choice is I spend my whole day davening and learning. I give my yom tif to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And the other opinion is kulo lachemi. The whole day is dedicated to feasting. But when it comes to sukkah, shuas, kula alme moed the boy nami lachem. And the Rebbe once said that nami lachem is begematria kates. Everybody agrees that on shvuas you have to enjoy yourself physically because the Eibush gave us the title. In other words, even that opinion. But when it comes to Pesach, when it comes to Sukkot, so when it comes to Shemini Atzeres, says, you have a Breda, Kulol Hashem, Kulol Hashem, you can spend the whole day for the Eibush, not not Shvuas. Shvuas, even you go in the day, that holds Kulol Hashem, you have to have meat and wine to have joy and pleasure and celebrate the fact that the Eibush gave us the Tatum. And then, of course, the Gemara, that Rabbi Yaisi, that always means the Gemara, that Rabbi Yaisi used to say on Shavuos that he would make an egla till he would prepare a very, very special feast of the richest meat, not chicken, you know. In, in, in Lubavitch, Bechal in the world today, from world today, when you say meat, you meet meat and chicken. But no, flesh, basa shoyed, basa behem, not basa reif. And they used to say, ilava yeim adikagodim, kama yesi ike beshuk. If not for the Abish to giving us the teda, how many yesifs are there in the street? Meaning to say, I would be no different than anybody else. The teda, especially you, get it, dedicates his life to the teda, gives great joy. I'm not chasvashom talking about the gaiva. I'm talking about the joy, the emancipation, the transcendence that comes from the Teda itself. Like it does in the Mishnah, right? We learn. <laughs> Lubavitch says Tikkun and Shavuos. The whole world learns. We say Tikkun. What's the difference? If you learn Teda, you get to enjoy it. You say Tikkun, it's Bittl and Kabbalah sale. But nevertheless, in the Tikkun, you have some pieces that uh, are big enough that we can enjoy them. Like we say the whole Rus, we say the whole Merkava, we say the whole Yashir, we say the whole Aser Sadibris. One of the things that we say on Shavuos that gives us joy is the last Mishnah, Mesech the Kedushin. It's a long Mishnah. And the last Mishnah, Mesech the Kedushin, talks about Parnosa, amongst other things. And uh, the Mishnah says, you know, that's why you have the Mishnah about which vocation produces good people and which vocation produces people that you cannot trust and which vocation produces bad people. So in that Mishnah, the Mishnah talks about giving your child a skill to make a living. And uh, he brings the Mishnah, the Mishnah brings, that, uh, that, uh, but you know these words, but you don't know that from the last Mishnah, the whole world was created for, to serve me. I was created to serve my maker. Or the second verse, right? And Kulam Bispanisim Shalei Bitzar, all other creations except for me, they have that panasa with no hardship. Birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, they put everything is in panasa, well outside. And I, the whole world was created for me. So madoch animals have panasa shlebe tzad. Why do I have to have tzad in panasa? So the Mishnah says, Hariyesi is massive, ekipachti is panasa. My actions have affected that my panasa is harder for me to access. And then the Mishnah brings up, oh, yeah, that uh, I am going to be maniach. One of the things that the Mishnah says, which is very interesting and compelling, is, It's a statement of fact. There is no vocation in the world that's not going to produce some people that are rich and some people that are poor. People think, I become a lawyer, I'm a millionaire. So, lav dafke. I become an accountant, I'm going to be broke. It says, lav dafke. Ein min anies, ein min There's no skill, no vocation that a person can learn that's not going to produce some people that are wealthy, and then the Roy says, I'm going to leave all other business, I'm going to teach my son Tater. Now we all know what happens when you learn Tater. You become a Nebuch, a Batle, a Shlepet. Why? Because when you learn Tater, you don't grow out of it. In your youth, it protects you, and in your senior years, it gives you joy. Shanemar, Eid, you knew from the Seva. The shame of a person doesn't learn Tayyid, it gets old. You know, I, one of the things that I learned as I started to age is you don't get smarter when you get older. <laughs> and you certainly don't become more righteous. Could be you don't sin as much. It's not because you're more righteous, it's because you don't have the koyach anymore, Pashat. People, you don't become better when you get older. Whatever you were when you're young, you're the same when you're older. And then you reach the age which is called grouch, right? Some people say that Ashi says in Chumish that grouch is a uniquely male characteristic, much more than females. That's why uh, uh, Alta Baba is much more pleasant to have around than Alta Zayda. Zayda Shet Chumish Rashi. In Pasha Zayda Shet Chumish Rashi. Pasha Zayda Shet Chumish Rashi. It's a Pasha Perish Rashi. 
But uh, a person who learns Teda doesn't age. That Indian, if a person is learning Teda, he's 80, 90 years old, I feel the goof out of it nation. Teda makes a person that the older he gets, the calmer he becomes, the sweeter he becomes, the more pleasant he becomes. Because Teda gives an internal concept of joy. You don't age. The goof ages. But if a person keeps on learning Teda, the Teda brings a joy and a quickness to his step. So this is all the Indian that Teda is connected to Simcha. Teda is connected to Simcha. But today it is also connected to Shalom, right? I started this conversation by saying that we're in the Yemei Tashlumim. We're in the makeup days. So the word Tashlumim means you have to pay a bill. I was supposed to bring a carbon on Shavuos. And I didn't bring a carbon on Shavuos. Some of the Kabbalists I didn't bring on Shavuos. I was able to bring them on Shavuos, but there were too many people. I said, eh, I'll wait till tomorrow. Some of the Kermonas, even if I want, I can't bring on Shavuos. There's a Machlekes between Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai because a carbon Eilas Re'iyah, a carbon that goes completely to Hashem, that a person doesn't have no, it's a Shaila if it's considered a carbon Tzibur or not. Every person who goes to the Beis Amitash, Sholosh, Paman Bashana has to bring two or three Kermonas. Or Eilas Re'iyah, which is eaten entirely by the Mizbeach, a Shalmei Chagiga, a Shlomim of Chagiga, and a Shalmei Simcha, a carbon for joy. The third carbon, Shalmei Simcha, it's possible that you shouldn't have to bring a carbon, you could be Yetzir with uh, Basar uh, Taiva, with not a carbon. But two carbonists for sure you have to bring. So the Shalmei Chagiga you eat, so you can bring that on Yom Tif, because it's called Eichel Nefesh. But the Eilas Re'i is called it to the Eibish so there's a whole question whether a carbon which goes completely to Hashem, you're allowed to bring on Yom Tif. Now they did bring carbonists to the Eibish on Yom Tif, the carbonists Tiva, all the communal offerings, were brought, were brought on Shabbos, but only if there were communal offerings. When every person has to bring a private offering together, so the carbon Pesach is for sure a carbon Tzibur, even though everybody brings their own. But the other carbon of Regal, of Yom Tif, it's not so posh that it can be considered like a carbon Tzibur. So there's a question if you can bring it on Shabbos and then Yom Tif. So Shavuos, the first day Shavuos, you can't bring the carbon, you bring it the next day. So some carbonas you're bringing the day after, you could have brought it yesterday, but you didn't get around to it. You didn't want to push. <laughs> some carbonas you couldn't bring yesterday, so you have no choice but to bring it today. Or tomorrow. It's ches, which is yem tveach, or today, which is tes. And they're called yemei tashlumin. And yemei tashlumin means they're make-up days. I'm making up what I didn't do yesterday. But I can't hear you. Why couldn't they bring it? On Yom Tif. Right. So they could have brought it yesterday. You could have brought it yesterday, you could have brought it two days ago also. The day after Shavuos is called Yem Tvayach, the day of Kabbalah. Even though we have five or six days after Shlumen, only one of them is called Yem Tvayach. Because the day after Yom Tif, you bring the carbon you couldn't bring on Yom Tif. But the Kabbalah, you could have brought Yom Tif, and you didn't, so you have, you should, ideally you should do it on Yom Tif. If not on Yom Tif, at least the next day. If not the next day, so you have a whole week. It's called Yemei Tashlumen. So the push of the title is Yemei Tashlumen, they're makeup days. So the Rebbe says that that's not enough. You cannot say that Yemei Tashlumen is only makeup days. Why? Because if a person brought his card, he can go home. You have to say Yemei Tashlumen the whole five days, or the whole six days. In addition to the day or days of Shavuos, has an inya pnimi of tashlubit. So the Rebbe says to make perfect. You, d- you did Shavuos. Right? The Abish gave the Teira and we will come the Teira. So we have five more days to make that tashlubit whole. So what I add to this, but that the is that the word tashlubit doesn't only mean to, to pay a bill. The word tashlubit doesn't only mean to make perfect and whole. To make tashlubit means to make peaceful. Shalom. You understand? That's for the word shalom. Peace. Because it says in the Mishnah, based on the Pasuk, Adeshem Eiz Lame Yitah, Adeshem Yivarach Lame Bashalim. So it says in the end of Mishnah, it's in the Shas. Ein Oiz Ela Teira. Teira is called Oiz, whatever Oiz means. And Ein Shalom Ela Teira. Teira is called Shalom. Teira is called Shalom. Teira is called peace. And of course, the Rebbe would add, immediately the peace of Teira is different than the peace of the world. Because peace in the world is based on compromise. Peace in the world is based on lies. Peace in the world is based on what the Rebbe says in Yiddish, is farkukum. you ignore, you overlook, you say, eh, it's not so important. Peace and Torah includes everything, and everybody, and everyone's concerned. And nevertheless, you find peace. Torah, even though on the one hand, it's a specific halacha, and a mitzvah, and a din, of a isma, sisa, yashavatev, 
Lefnimi Shuris Adin, Zup Shara. When it comes to disputes over finances, sometimes the right thing to do is to compromise. The Bezdin wants to compromise, and the Balidin want to compromise. But ultimately, the Indian of Tayyid has shown that the world should be peaceful. Peaceful, not because I, I lose out, or you lose out, or she loses out, or he loses out, but peaceful because everybody's interests are met exactly. This is the Tayyid that the Tayyid gives. The Torah gives a koyach, not just for pshara, but the Torah gives a koyach for shalom, for peace, for perfection, for exactitude, that every prat should be exactly the way it is. And of course, the basis for shalom in the world is bitl. In order to have shalom in the world, I guess I'll use a, a, a more worldly term. Bitl is a word that makes people very nervous. Yeah? In order to have Shalom, in the world, you have to be interested in the truth. <laughs> right? That's not bitter, right? That's yeshes. You have to want that the right thing should happen. You have to listen to the other person. You have to get the other person to listen to you. And you have to find the Eimek HaShava, the place that is so deep, where both of you can come to agree. On the surface, you disagree. You go down deep enough, you find the place of, of Shalom, of Shlemus, of peacefulness, and wholeness. wholeness. And this is Teda. So when you say that Shavu says, you make Tashlumen, I'm proposing that first of all it's Yimei Simch, I don't say Tachana. And second of all it's Yimei Tashlum, and not only in the sense that we're paying bills. And the Rebbe adds to this, not only in, in the sense that you're also making perfect and whole what you've already done in Kabbalah Satir. So I'm adding, but that the idea of Shalom, that there should be peace, there should be peace. That the ultimate thing in the tongue there should be Shalom peace. And I'll share with you two interesting points. One point that has two parts, Estes. The first is that since the beginning of time, there has been the union of machlaikas by yin. Dispute, dissent, disagreements by yin, machlaikas. Because like the Mishnah says, the Gemara says, that the Torah was not given in such a way that the halach is clear. The Torah was given in such a way, I think the Lashon is Kedar Mem test ponim tome, or mem test ponim tohe. The tailor was given in such a fashion that you can find 49 ways to make tohe, 49 different ways to make tohe, and 49 different ways to make tome. And the Rav who's learning the tailor goes down to the depths that he's able to go down and understands and interprets and paskins based on his t- tendency, based on his nitia, based on his leaning, which is why one paskins tohe, another one paskins tome. Like it says in Hasidus, and it's brought in the Sikh Taka from 30 years ago, this Shru is Teira Chadosh Amiti Teitzei. I'll never forget the Rebbe saying that Sikh, I was there, I remember it. That when Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai argue, and Hillel and Shammai before them, they argue based on Shadish Nishmas. Hillel's Nisham is leaning towards Chesed, he passed the Hakam. Shammai's Nisham is, le- is from Gevura, so it's leaning, it's paskening, Lahachme. So it's not the pshat that Hillel said what he said, this is how he felt. And Beishamah said what they said, or Shammah said what he said, because this is how he felt, or they felt. But rather, they use their minds to understand the Torah. But behind their mind is their soul, their neshama, their nefesh. And their mind and their soul has a certain neti, has a certain leaning. So the seichel came out, lintes klape chesed, leaning towards chesed, leaning towards wood. And then of course, Shammah and Hillel argued. In any case, where Shammai could show Hillel that he's wrong, and Hillel that cannot defend himself, that's not a machlek is b'shamay b's Hillel. That's a lakul amal apli, everyone agrees like Shammai. If Hillel could show Shammai that Shammai was wrong, and Shammai could not defend himself, so we're not going to call that a machlek is Hillel, and Shammai is going to call the consensus, everybody agrees, lahachmen. All the machlek is b's Hillel and b'shamay, Hillel and Shammai and so on, are in those cases where Hillel was able to argue with Shammai and push back any question Shammai asked. Shammai was able to answer Hillel on all the questions that Hillel asked, and he was not able to refute him. So they remained with the Machloikas. Hillel remained correct in his day. Based Hillel remained correct in their day. Shammai remained correct in his day. Based Shammai remained correct in their day. So they became the Machloikas. And then you have all the different Klonah Shas of Achir Rabbah Mahates, and so on and so forth. So it says in Gemara, it says in Chazal, that there was a Tkufa called the Zugais where the leadership of Klal Yisrael consisted of two leaders. This went on from after Antignes Ishtseche, which is, uh, I don't know, 70, 80 years into Bayez Shani. And it lasted till Hill and Hashem, Hill and Hashem, it lasted the Zugis, before them with Shemayin Aftali, and before them with others, and so on. 
During the Tkuf of the Zugas, the Gemara says there was one machlaikis, one argument about smich. The Nasi said one thing and the Abed said another thing in each respective generation. When it came to Hillel and Shammai, so there's a beginning of Masech the which we also learned, Taka and Tignan we have three machlaikis, and Hillel and Shammai only argued three times. The students of Hillel and the students of Shammai, Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai, they argued many times. Why? Because when you have, when you see, he learns Tena. And he learns Tena, Bishanim, Kitikunim, as things are supposed to be. In a good time, in a good way. So he has what's called Shimush. He's Mishamish Tamidich Chacham. He doesn't just learn Tena and Paschan Alachas. He learns Tena and he sits by, by Gedele Yisrael. And he gets practice on the job training of how Alachas get Paschan. When Abonim have Smich, he means they know the Shulchan Aruch and they have adequate shimush, their, their ability to understand the Tera, like the Lushan that says by Beis Hillel, Nechen Valuven, calmly, collectively, deliberately, is such that they work out their differences. When two Chachamim argue, they resolve their differences, and they come take to an Emek HaShava, to a consensus, they all agree. But when you have Talmidim, Shaloi, Shem, Chikol, you have Tzaris, the Beis Hamid, the Beis Hamikdash becomes an unsafe place for the Sanhedrin, so it has to have to leave the Shkasa Gozis, has to go into Golos, and the Yavne, and into this place, and into this place, and it ends up in Tveria. So the Yeshiva Bacharim, being a light, maybe they learn, they're big Goinim, but Shimosh, they lack, Lo Yishim Shukot Tzarkam, this results in Machlaikis, which is insoluble, that they cannot resolve. So in the earlier times, people argued, but they argued and argued and argued and argued until they came to a place where they realized that they agreed. So in the two of us, there was one argument they couldn't resolve. Hillel and Shammai, there were only three arguments they couldn't resolve. Base Hillel and Beis Shammai, because they were on a lower level, they argued more. Can't stop arguing. The idea that Torah is Sholem, is peace, in Das Tacht, on the basic level, is to find yourself in a matter of Sholem, a peaceful world, and you learn Torah in a peaceful way, so you resolve all disputes and tater in such a way that it's a consensus, which you cannot say for Beishami and Beishilu. The marshal for that in Svarim that we learn is what Flabavich's best friend. <laughs> the Rambam, the Mishnah, the Tater, the Rambam, the Rambam, he doesn't bring you different opinions, he just brings you the Aloha Psukha, the Aloha Lamaise. The Rebbe said that the, te- the Rambam's Chokonoroch is the Tater Chadosh of Mashiach. The way the Rambam Paskins, so we'll get a Paskin after Mashiach comes. Because the Rambam wrote a Tera of Sholem, the Rambam wrote a Tera of Shleiman, a Tera of Shol, a, tera, a whole Tera, a complete Tera, and a peaceful Tera. Um, but many of the other Sfar that we have have involved Machlaikis. Now, of course, the Halacha is that you have to incorporate the Machlaikis into the Halacha, and then you have to find the various methods by which the Halacha is determined in order to paskin like whom you paskin. But a the Sinyan, a Sholem, and Tera, the idea that you didn't learn Tera, and Tera brings peace, means that they acknowledge each other's differences, they recognize each other's differences, they listen to each other. One of the most difficult things for anybody who's intelligent to do is to actually hear what somebody else has to say and try and understand, not try and prove them wrong. Try and understand and then decide whether they agree or disagree and be able to argue back in a way that the other person can hear their counter-argument and they should try and understand until they come to an emek ha And if you can't do that, you're stuck with machlekes and so on and so forth. But this is Teda. Teda has a tashlum. The piece of Teda is that the machlek is not resolved. Go ahead. But you have to talk loud for me to hear you. So why did Hashem... You know what my answer to that question is standing? So you're not... You're, you're not a Beisifka girl. You were once a Beisifka girl. But whenever my girls ask me such questions, I say to them... I say to them that the last time I had a conversation with the he told me that so-and-so is going to come to your class and she's going to ask this question. Tell her you're not going to tell her. I'm not, the Ebi told me I shouldn't tell you. Why did the Ebi You know the story with the Alter Rebbe. One guy says, if I was the Ebi I'd be nicer. And the other guy says, if I was the I'd be meaner. And the Alter Rebbe says, if I was the Ebi I would do what the Ebi does. We sing about Agolos. And we're here, learning the same Tera. Huh? 
obviously is a big word, right? That what they, yes, what the Avish that wants is right, it's painful. It's very painful. It's very, very hard to swallow. Wow, that's what you say. If the Avish that felt that doing the right thing would be better accommodated differently, I think you would have done it differently. You think that if it was easier, we would be better. <laughs> Just look at you and your parents, and look at your children and you, and your children's children and your children. Easier is better. Love that. <laughs> easier is better. It's a different test. It's a different test. The way the English they gave us the Teda is the way it's supposed to be. And by the way, to talk seriously, without the Torah. You must understand the English did not give us the Teda to, for us to do what he said. The English should give us the Teda for us to do what we say. He gave the Teda to Yidin and said, you tell me what it means. You paskin, and the way you paskin, I will follow. There's a famous Gemara. Where the Bezdin Shalmata told the Abish that, excuse me, sir, we disagree. And the Allah is different than the Abish that said, that the Mesetta Derekia said, and the Kuchavrikh said. And the Gemara says, Kochayach, because Koma, the Abish that laughs and he says, Natschuni Bona Natschuni, defeat me, my children. The Abish gave the Tayra for us to be ours, and for us to interpret it in each generation on their level. So now, since this man of this Anshikan Sakdoilo, we don't exactly do each generation. Until the each generation passed in the Allah for themselves. After the Allah are binding. But the idea that G'dayli Yisrael have to study the Torah and study the world, the Matthias, and Paskin Allah, this is the Kech that the Ibish they gave us. And it says in Chumash, in a number of different ways, in a number of different places, um, that Pasuk everybody knows is from Kiddush, yeah? So, Oisam, Oisam is missing of all. It doesn't say oisam alavov tov mem, it says alav tov mem. So the Chazal says, I'll take you ala atem, I should take you atem, you didn't make yom tov. Atem afilu mutoyim, atem afilu sheyim, atem afilu mazidim. You didn't determine what yom tov is, even if they're making a mistake. You didn't determine what yom tov is, even if they're making a mistake on purpose. And in Allah has come of a come of the making a mistake by mistake. The Abish that gave this prayer to Yidin to decide when yom tov is. Period. And the same is true when it comes to Allah. Rabbonam abakoyach atoyim. In other words, it's not the pshat that what the Rav says, the Abish that says. It's the pshat that the Abish that says what the Rav says. And that makes me crazy and nervous and freaked out because I don't like my Rav because he didn't pass him like me. But that's the Kei That's the Kei And the Chassidus is saying that save call save needs to be shown. Let me finish. I got to finish my talk. I got to go, yeah? And the end of my speech is that uh, the ultimate shalom is what the Rebbe brings in the Sikha from Tishrei Membeis, which is called Alochas Ha'elu, Halalu, Einam, Betelm Le'elam, the Rebbe brings a Gevalde Kavar, that it says, Kol Machleikas, Shein L'Shem Shemaim, Seif Yilis Kai. Anytime there's a Machleikas, people argue, and the Machleikas is for the sake of heaven, L'Shem Shemaim, the Machleikas lasts. It lasts forever. Eizi Machleikas, L'Shem Shemaim, what is a Machleikas which lasts forever? Zu Machleikas, Hilu V'Shamaim. And the question is asked, that a machlaikas should last as a good thing? That you can keep on fighting, continue arguing? Shouldn't it be better if they should find a solution? So the Rebbe says, now we pass him like this hill. After Mashiach comes, we're going to pass him like Bishami. And El Mabah, we're going to pass him like both. We're going to do both like Bishami and Bishami. And that's the Pshat Seif in this kind. Both days are practiced simultaneously, and that's the ultimate idea that Tayyid is Shalom. And then, of course, the Rebbe asks the common sense question. You can argue about theory, but you can't do one thing two different ways. You can't do the same action twice, two different ways. You either do it this way, this way. So the Rebbe says, it's a nin on the noise. On the level which is above Seichel, we will do like both. In El Mabo, everybody is going to be in the Madreg of nin on the noise. And we'll do it both ways at the same time. That's so the Rebbe touches it. You have to learn the Sikh. I can't teach you all Chassidus on one foot. There's El Mhaze, there's Yemesa Mashiach, and El Mabo. In El Mabod, there's no more mitzvahs. Because there really isn't any more free will. Mitzvah means a commandment. Because we're basically expressions of Hashem. But there's halacha. Which means you grow from a level to a level. You grow. That's why the Lashon Adi Rishalmi is halacha is halalu enem The mitzvahs, you could say, has a hefzik. But the, the idea that Hashem gives a commandment and we choose to listen, this has a hefzik. But halacha, the idea that teda is forever, we constantly do the teda and walk in the ways of the teda and grow with that mobility is forever.
And the Rebbe says in El Mabod, there's going to be halachas. And halachas is going to be like Beis Shami and Beis Hillel. And we're going to do both at the same time. Okay, so what did we talk about today? So we talked about two things today. Number one, the Tere is Misameach. And number two, the Tere gives Shalom. This kind of Shalom or this kind of Shalom. And the Rikir is, We want Mashiach now. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to do a Maimir online. And here I will see you, Mitzvah Shem, if you want to come on Sunday. Thank you for coming.